A common theme in stories is the idea of a sacred tree of life, a single source for which all sapient beings flock to for their sustenance. What if I told you that such a place is real? What if I told you there are entire nations that rely on a single hand to feed them? And its coveted name? Centrelink. In Australian religion, there is just one deity, neither god nor donkey, but a monolith. Open 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. Smoko excluded. Will it provide you money? Will it generate AI debt notices like its algorithmic art? You can only enter and discover. All hail. I went with someone to Centrelink. Don't ask why, I was bored and in the city. What else are you gonna do in Perth? I was with this shoeless muso in Fremantle who foolishly assumed I knew how a camera worked and asked, hi, can you film me playing music? Never have I seen more joy in someone's face when I pulled out my little lapel mic. Not since I aced hit me with your best shot on easy in Guitar Hero did I feel this much like a rock star. One recording and chat later and we will lax a days in towards Centrelink. Instant regret as while walking to Centrelink they chortled, Hi, I got the funniest story for you. Oh, no. Then proceeded to show me a trail of blood on the pavement leading to the chemist. It was like a horror movie crime scene. Little drops on the pavement like evidence of a dead body being dragged to the wharves. I'm familiar with odd senses of humour, but following a trail of blood from a crazed Fremantle musician is really pushing it. Come on, Mr. Leader, just carry me down to the porch for the blood. Come, let me play you a song to calm your Free, way to go. Hit him real hard. Send him down below. Free, oh, we are the free. Anyway, we got to the end and she stopped, aloofly muttering, Oh, I guess the council must have cleaned it up. Yeah, I was just sitting here bleeding like a crackhead, all the while laughing like a crackhead and moving barefoot about like an overstimming child. When me and Miss Muso entered Centrelink, the entrance looked like a baggage claim where a security guard dressed like a flight attendant asked us to leave our stuff. The Muso went up to the counter and told the lady that she had an appointment at 2.30 p.m. The lady, Cusack rendition here, then asked what their customer reference number was, to which Muso said after a pause, I don't have a customer reference number. And the Center lady, not missing a single beat and not even changing expression either, just like those drug robots in Elysium. Breathe. You can't have an appointment if you don't have a reference number. White roof and one seated sofa's arranged assembly line. If it wasn't for the marginal moistness from mysterious fluids and containing drywall instead of carpet wall, then it would make an excellent candidate for a liminal backroom with its recurring cut budget cartoon theme. Centrelink is like a mix between a regional library that was built before creative architecture and an American tax office, all the while playing 90s era tropical music. How it feels to chew matzo's ginger beer. There was one bloke who was meandering around with an empty Schweppes bottle, fancy pants, wearing nothing but Adidas. When the bloke asked my muso friend what her name was, she replied, oh, what's your name? To which he replied, Dundee. Look, I know there hasn't been a Crocodile Dundee film in a few years, but I was still caught off guard by how much Paul Hogan has fallen over the years. When we were in line, the person behind us was a large turnip man who was blatantly slandering Centrelink while the staff was present in not exactly the prettiest language. Couldn't tell if Barnaby Joyce or a British innkeeper. I guess there isn't much of a choice when you lose an election. When we took a seat, a worker lady tried to wake a bloke sleeping on a makeshift bed fond by merging two of the tiny green couches together. After the lady went to see if the man was cooled up yet, he went straight back to sleep, as if 
there not to actually receive financial benefits from Centrelink, presumably just there to use the furniture. The bathrooms of a Centrelink belong in a hospital horror movie. Firstly, they're locked, so you need to ask a guard to open it for a piddle. At least schools have the dignity of giving you a toilet pass. The idea of being walked to the toilet by your teacher is about as appealing as reading a peer-reviewed study about how I did your mum last night. Working on the meta-analysis as we speak. <laughs> Don't be fooled by their childish nature of access. They are no place for kids. The place is what can only be described as a clean mess. And that would be fine, just like the simulations of your typical public school bathroom, if not for the dimming lights that flicker up and down apocalyptically. So while taking a piss, you feel the need to keep your eyes open for zombies. Hey. It was gonna happen. Seno would be ground zero. I'd also feel safer if the toilet door had a lock on it and actually closed. It wasn't broken. Again, that would be just like public schools and expected. The door literally had neither lock nor knob, forcing it to be left just slightly open while in the bathroom. That was my brief adventure into Centrelink. The craziest part of that entire journey was that I was there in the first place.